Picture this, it's 1988, and television screens across the nation flicker to life with a new kind of leading lady. With a sharp wit that cuts through the mundane and a fierce determination that radiates from the screen, Murphy Brown strides into our lives, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of television. Maybe you remember the first time her unapologetic feminism clashed with the conservative world around her, or perhaps it was her unfiltered candor that drew you in. Whatever the case, the 1988 TV series Murphy Brown was more than just a show. It was a reflection of changing times, a mirror to society's shifting norms, and a source of endless laughter. But let's dive deeper, beyond the surface. Behind the camera lights and scripted lines, Murphy Brown harbored a treasure trove of intriguing anecdotes that might surprise even the most ardent fans. From casting choices that nearly went a different direction to the real-world controversies, that the show fearlessly tackled. These random nuggets of information add a new layer to the show's legacy. So, settle in as we journey back to the era of shoulder pads and VHS tapes, exploring the lesser-known facets of Murphy Brown. Who knows, you might just stumble upon some trivia that sparks a wave of nostalgia or encourages you to rewatch this iconic series with fresh eyes. The stage is set, the anecdotes are cued. Let's uncover the hidden gems that make Murphy Brown shine anew. And remember, behind every iconic show lies a world of secrets waiting to be discovered. Murphy Brown, a prominent 1988 TV series, originated as a sitcom centered around the eponymous character Murphy Brown, an intelligent and strong-willed investigative journalist. The show gained prominence for its exploration of gender roles and societal issues, marking a departure from traditional sitcom narratives. The ensemble cast included iconic characters like Frank Fontana, Corky Sherwood, and Miles Silverberg, each contributing to the show's dynamic humor and topical commentary. Known for its unique style, Murphy Brown seamlessly blended humor with serious social and political topics, tackling issues such as single motherhood, addiction, and media ethics. Candace Bergen's portrayal of Murphy Brown earned praise for its wit and depth, making her a symbol of assertive, career-driven women on television. The show's impact on popular culture was significant. It challenged norms by portraying a strong, independent woman navigating a demanding career and personal life. Murphy's unapologetic nature and the series' willingness to address current events set a new standard for sitcoms, influencing subsequent shows that fused humor with meaningful dialogue. Random facts about the show further illuminate its legacy. Murphy Brown received critical acclaim and a dedicated fan base, garnering 18 Emmy Awards during its original run. The fictional newsroom setting and the fictional FYI news magazine became iconic symbols of the series. A notable real-world connection was the controversy sparked by a storyline involving Murphy's decision to become a single mother, leading to a debate involving Vice President Dan Keel. In summation, Murphy Brown remains a landmark television series that reshaped the sitcom landscape. Its strong characters, unique style, and ability to tackle important issues contributed to its lasting impact on both television and societal perceptions. In a remarkable twist of architectural fate, the iconic exterior building serving as Murphy Brown's residence in the 1988 TV series is none other than the very same edifice that once portrayed Diana Prince's abode in Wonder Woman. This serendipitous connection adds an extra layer of intrigue to the show's history, subtly linking two powerful and trailblazing female characters through shared fictional real estate. Notable for its sharp wit and incisive social commentary, Murphy Brown almost saw a vastly different trajectory in its inception. According to a Revealing Ladies Home Journal article from March 2000, CBS had originally set their sights on Heather Locklear to don the titular role. The potential casting choice offers a glimpse into the alternate paths that beloved shows might tread, hinting at an entirely distinct dynamic between character and performer. In a unique convergence of creator and character, Diane English, the brilliant mind behind Murphy Brown, made a guest appearance in the series' season 10 finale. Stepping out from behind the scenes, she graced the screen as a doctor, bridging the gap between her creative vision and the world she had cultivated for a decade. Murphy Brown's legacy continues to resonate as a paragon of television excellence, where narrative innovation and real-world issues harmoniously coalesce. Its accidental connection to Wonder Woman's sanctuary, the almost casting of Heather Locklear, 
and Diane English's on-screen cameo weave a rich tapestry of anecdotes that underscore the show's enduring impact. With each episode, Murphy Brown remains a testament to the power of storytelling, provoking thought and laughter in equal measure. The iconic brownstone facade may have housed different characters, but its legacy as a symbol of strong, independent women endures in both cases. Truly, in the realm of television history, Murphy Brown stands as a living testament to the timeless essence of the small screen. The small screen. The small Candace Bergen's candid confession, a glimpse into Murphy Brown's past in a revealing interview on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Candace Bergen, the iconic star of the 1988 TV series Murphy Brown, shared a surprising tidbit from her past. Bergen admitted to having dated none other than Donald Trump long before his political aspirations took center stage. With candor, she recalled, he was a handsome douchebag back then. This confession offers a rare glimpse into the personal history of both Bergen and the former president, adding a layer of intrigue to the acclaimed show's legacy. The parallels between the characters on Murphy Brown and real-life figures continue to captivate. Take, for instance, the character of Jim Dial, a respected newsman on the show. Sources suggest that Dial was modeled after Jim Jensen, a prominent television news reporter for New York City's WCBS-TV. This subtle homage to Jensen underscores the show's commitment to authenticity in portraying the world of media. Amidst the laughter and drama, the series harbored a recurring joke that revolved around Murphy Brown's revolving door of secretaries. Across ten seasons, Murphy cycled through a staggering 93 secretaries, each humorously credited as Secretary 1, Secretary 2, and so forth. The struggle to find a secretary who could withstand Murphy's whirlwind personality became a signature element. Interestingly, Marsha Wallace made a memorable appearance, reprising her role as Carol Kester from The Bob Newhart Show. In an unexpected twist, Murphy encountered a support group for her former secretaries, highlighting their shared challenge of keeping up with her. Murphy Brown not only entertained audiences, but also weaved a tapestry of anecdotes that resonate to this day. From personal connections to real-life figures to its comedic take on the challenges of a newsroom, the show's legacy continues to shine brightly, reminding us of the power of television in capturing both the essence and eccentricities of life. Of life. Of life. Murphy Brown, unveiling the subtle homage to Beatles legends in the panorama of 1980s television. Few shows commanded attention like Murphy Brown. Amid the bustling newsroom and the sharp wits, an enigmatic character emerged, Stuart Best. A closer look reveals a hidden nod to Beatles lore, drawing parallels between Stuart Sutcliffe and Pete Best, former members who left the legendary band. The series creator, Diane English, ingeniously weaved this tribute into the narrative. Much like Sutcliffe's departure from the Beatles due to artistic pursuits, Best and Murphy Brown walked his path as a painter, mirroring the creative tensions that arise in any ensemble. The nuanced reference, often missed by casual viewers, showcases English's deep appreciation for music history. Murphy Brown itself enjoyed its zenith during a three-year stretch from 1989 to 1992 an era when it joined forces with designing women, creating an unforgettable television block. The duo's back-to-back -back airing captivated audiences, resulting in a rating surge that etched the show's legacy. The parallel wit and distinct female-led narratives resonated harmoniously, a testament to the network's ingenious programming. Notably, Murphy Brown also marked a unique milestone for its cast members, Jake McDormand and Annalee Tipton. Their on-screen chemistry wasn't newfound, the two had previously portrayed a couple in another television endeavor. This marked the third chapter in their collaborative journey, a testament to their acting prowess and undeniable charm. Amidst the fast-paced newsroom banter, Murphy Brown held an intricate tapestry of references and connections, each thread contributing to its timeless appeal. As the series unfolds, it becomes evident that the seemingly mundane can carry layers of meaning much like the tribute to Beatles legends and the entwined careers of its cast members. In a realm where television often caters to the moment, Murphy Brown stands as a reminder that even amidst laughter and repartee, there lies an artful storytelling depth that rewards those willing to delve. Decoding Dan Keel, Murphy Brown's impact on family values discourse in a seismic moment during the fourth season of the 1988 TV series Murphy Brown. 
the titular character, portrayed by Candace Bergen, gave birth to her child, Avery. The storyline set off more than just on-screen drama. It ignited a national conversation that rippled into the political arena. Vice President Dan Keel, during a televised debate, took aim at the show's portrayal of an unmarried woman becoming a mother, decrying it as a tacit endorsement of single motherhood and a deterioration of family values. Keel's words struck a chord in an election year thick with cultural debates. The question of family values loomed large in the public consciousness, and Murphy Brown had inadvertently found itself at the center of this maelstrom. The show's producers and writers, however, were not ones to shy away from a fight. Their retaliation came in the form of the season 5 premiere, aptly titled You Say Potato, I Say Potato. The episode wielded humor as a weapon, featuring the infamous debate clip and lampooning Keel's remarks with a deft pen. The line between fiction and reality blurred as Murphy Brown turned the political into comedic gold. The episode deftly maneuvered through satire and commentary, engaging viewers while subtly challenging the boundaries of political discourse within entertainment. Keel's criticism had inadvertently sparked a meta-narrative that not only deepened the show's impact, but underscored its relevance in an ever-evolving media landscape. The skirmish between the vice president and the sitcom laid bare the interconnectedness of pop culture and politics. Murphy Brown emerged not just as a source of entertainment, but as a reflection of societal shifts and an unlikely participant in the national conversation. Its ability to wield humor as a tool for commentary demonstrated the potential of television to navigate complex issues while evoking genuine laughter. In the end, Murphy Brown weathered the storm and continued its run, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of television and public discourse. It remains a testament to the power of storytelling to not only reflect but also shape the cultural zeitgeist. As we bid adieu to this captivating journey down memory lane, I implore you to pause for a moment. Let your mind wander back to those times when you found solace in the witty banter of the FYI newsroom or when Murphy's unapologetic charm spoke to a rebellious part of you. The 1988 TV series Murphy Brown wasn't just a show. It was a kaleidoscope of emotions, an emblem of an era, a ticket to a world where laughter and reality seamlessly danced. Think of those late nights or lazy afternoons, your faithful TV companion being none other than Murphy and her eclectic team. Was it the clever quips that had you chuckling or the impassioned debates that ignited your thoughts? Maybe it was that uncanny ability of the show to strike a chord with your own experiences, reminding you that life's chaos is best embraced with a hearty dose of humor. As we reflect on the legacy of Murphy Brown, I extend a hand of camaraderie, an invitation to share your cherished memories, your most treasured anecdotes. Let's celebrate the moments that made us laugh out loud or ponder the complexities of life all while ensconced in the embrace of a television show that etched its mark on hearts across the globe. Your reflections are not just musings, they are the threads that weave together the tapestry of our collective affection for this iconic series. So, whether you choose to pen down your thoughts or simply take a quiet moment to relive those scenes in your mind's eye, know that you're adding to the vibrant mosaic of Murphy Brown enthusiasts. With utmost gratitude for your time and the fondness you hold for this timeless show, I raise a virtual toast to the unforgettable moments we've shared. Thank you for allowing me to traverse this expedition of reminiscence with you. Until we meet again, keep those memories close and those smiles wider. Warm regards.